Hello, my name is Ara Kishishian, and we're going to review calcium metabolism and calcium oxalate stone formation. Calcium oxalate stones are probably the most common stones that are formed in kidneys of patients that have had weight loss surgery. Calcium metabolism is regulated by a parathyroid hormone which is secreted by the glands that are located behind the thyroid gland. There are four of them, very small, that are behind the thyroid in the neck. The ultimate goal of parathyroid hormone is to maintain a normal level of calcium in the bloodstream. So when a patient's calcium in the blood is sensed to be low, that results in parathyroid hormone secretion from the parathyroid glands. With parathyroid hormone that's secreted, that causes bones to be broken down, which releases the calcium into the bloodstream and tries to normalize the calcium level. It also sends a set of signals to the kidney to allow for absorption of more of the calcium that may be lost in the urine. And as a secondary function, it will also help with absorption of more and all of calcium that may be available in the GI tract that's taken by mouth. So essentially this whole loop starts by a sensor, set of sensory signals that identifies low calcium in the blood which causes parathyroid hormone to be secreted and then that in results cause bone breakdown, resorption and absorption of calcium from the kidney and the small intestine. A second molecule that we need to be aware of is vitamin D. Vitamin D is the key that allows for calcium to be absorbed. As in these drawings, you can note that the calcium may be available in the GI tract and there are calcium receptors. However, the calcium is absorbed when the receptor is opened up by the vitamin D. You can think of vitamin D as being the key that allows the door to be opened for the calcium to be absorbed. Calcium metabolism, we can look at it by the form of what it does in our body. Calcium plays a role in blood clotting, normal muscle function, including the heart as a uh, physiologic function and the skeletal muscles. It plays a role in nerve conduction and a uh, number of enzymes that are involved in different function in our body. Sources of the calcium is primarily bone, uh, which is a huge reservoir. So whenever there is low calcium either absorbed or available, we have bone breakdown. In an uh, extreme case, we're dealing with uh, osteoporosis, for example. And um, here we can sort of see how the body uh, has the bone distributed throughout essentially the bone and the teeth. Calcium regulation is maintained by parathyroid hormones, as I said a little earlier. There's also another set of hormone, uh, one of which is calcitonin, which regulates opposite of the parathyroid hormone. This is the technical explanation of what I explained a little earlier, that with a low calcium level, what essentially happens is parathyroid hormone increases, and increasing parathyroid hormone uh, results in a set of uh, physiologic changes, all of which will result in increasing absorption of the calcium through the intestine, increasing calcium resorption from the kidneys, and breakdown of the bone to increase the calcium level in the bloodstream. What happens when there is actually high calcium level? This causes opposite of parathyroid increase. Parathyroid is decreased or normalized and it releases uh, and uh, calcitonin is released. This does uh, result in taking of the calcium from bloodstream and depositing it in the bone and increases the calcium excretion of the kidneys. Another way of looking at it again, the calcium is regulated over a relatively narrow range with normal calcium level being the uh, end result. 
We have high parathyroid hormone, increasing the calcium intake and absorption. When you have low calcium, high parathyroid hormone will have to increase the calcium intake. The end result being a normal calcium level, normal parathyroid hormone. If we have actually calcium oxalate crystals that are formed, calcium itself is soluble and will not form a stone by itself. When calcium and oxalate are mixed together, then you end up forming these crystals. It is important to appreciate that the calcium oxalate is the nidus of forming a calcium oxalate stone. And the key would be to avoid calcium and oxalate get mixed together in the serum or in the urine. So if we were to take large volume of calcium by mouth that would form calcium oxalate with any oxalate that may be available in our GI tract and it will not form a calcium oxalate stone in our serum or in our blood so we will not form calcium oxalate crystals and calcium oxalate stones in our urine. It is not recommended to stop taking calcium if a patient has calcium oxalate stone. I understand this sounds counterintuitive, but the point that needs to be appreciated is the reason why patients form calcium oxalate stones is not because of the calcium component. It's actually because of calcium oxalate component being formed in the serum and in the urine which deposits itself in the tubular structure of the kidney and that's how the stone and uh, the the crystals and the stores are formed so if i was to reduce my calcium intake by mouth what that will do is it will actually increase my parathyroid hormone which i discussed earlier Increasing parathyroid hormone would increase calcium in the bloodstream and that free calcium in my bloodstream will mix with any oxalate that I have taken by mouth in different food forms and we'll talk about it in a sec. It forms calcium oxalate crystal in the, the bloodstream and in the urine resulting in calcium oxalate crystal. Now if we were to think about it as to what will happen if we continue taking large volume of calcium and oxalate by mouth. Taking large volume of calcium and oxalate by mouth will result in calcium oxalate crystal and stone formation in our GI tract which is a non-issue because they cannot get into our uh, bloodstream to form calcium oxalate crystal and uh, stones of the kidneys. Oxalate restriction is what we should aim for with calcium oxalate stone formation. There are certain types of food that are very high in oxalate and you can uh, sort of review this on your own. Low calcium oxalate diet is uh, recommended. Um, and uh, one of the other things that we need to uh, discuss overall when we're talking about calcium oxalate stone formation or any type of calcium stone formation is that the patient should significantly increase their liquid intake um, and uh, fresh uh, lemonade um, consumption also helps to shift the acidity of the urine to allow for any existing calcium oxalate crystals hopefully to dissolve and go uh, and, and get dissolved. These are examples of different kidney stones that have been retracted uh, from patients. Thank you.